In this week's video, I'm gonna be talking about the Festool LR32 system and how I use it to speed up the process in my cabinet builds. Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Jason with Ben's Woodworking, and if you're new to my channel, consider subscribing. Lately, I've been using my LR32 system a lot because of all the built-in projects that I've been doing for both my son's room and our master bedroom. I figure this is a great opportunity to kind of walk you through and show you and really try to simplify it um, so you guys can start using it if you have one and maybe you just haven't really been using it. Or if it's something you're interested in investing in for yourself. So today I'm gonna to briefly show you and explain to you the way that I use the system to drill my shelf pin holes, uh, pre-drill locations for drawer slides, um, pre-drill the hinge plate locations. This video is not going to be an all-encompassing video. I am mainly gonna focus on how you can utilize this on your cabinet sides for the three things that I already talked about. So let's just go ahead and get into it. Here in a moment I will bring you in closer, but this right here in this sustainer is the LR32 kit. The router that I'm using is the OF1400. This system is compatible with the OF1400 or the OF1010. This right here is the LR32 rail with all the indexing holes, and I'll explain that here shortly. And then what I will be doing my example on is this example side panel uh, that I made. And again, I'll walk through all of this here shortly. So inside of this kit is various tools. Um, and the first thing that is in here, these are the indexing stops that you use on the rail. Um, I'll briefly show how these work, but I actually don't use these. The next thing you have is the actual base plate for the router and a couple of screws for it to attach to the router. The next thing is a centering mandrel, and I will walk you through why you actually use this. And then it comes with three different bits. One bit is actually in the router right now. Then you have this bit, and then you have this 35 millimeter hinge boring bit. This right here is a five millimeter bit. This has a pointed edge. This bit is used to pierce all the way through. Uh, for example, if you were doing a center cabinet and you were gonna have shelf pins on both sides, you would use this and it would pierce all the way through the wood. The bit that is actually currently in my router is a flat bottomed bit and that is for stopped five millimeter holes for shelf pins on say maybe just one side of the cabinet, which is what we will demonstrate today. And lastly, we have these locating bars right here. Um, they're already attached to my rail, but I did want to show you them. You will get to see them again here momentarily once I actually get everything set up. These are located on the bottom side of the rail and attached from the top with these knobs here. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take uh, the bit out because we need to put the centering mandrel in there and it's just easier to do it before you get started. So now that I have the bit out, I, I did wanna show you guys real quick what I was talking about. So this is going to create a flat bottomed hole. So it's not gonna go all the way through, but that's the difference between the two bits. Go ahead and put in my centering mandrel. And I'm not even really gonna tighten this down too much. I'm just gonna tighten it down enough so where it doesn't move, right? And this is very crucial uh, for this next step, attaching the base to it. And now, so it doesn't matter how you put it on here, right? Because it's only gonna fit one way. So it fits this way. If I tried to flip it up on this side, this just gets confusing sometimes. It doesn't fit properly, right? So it'll only go on one way. It only lines up one direction. And when I'm looking at it, the way that I like to remember is the knob is to the left when the handle, the trigger for the router is pointing my body, right? So you just put in these two screws. I'm not gonna tighten down them all the way. I'm just gonna finger tighten them until they're almost fully tightened. And you'll see why here in a moment. So I've still got a little bit of play and that's fine. That's what I want. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna push this down let me see if I can get a, a better angle. So the reason I didn't tighten these down all the way, and you're gonna see this, watch, it's gonna shift. And it's because it's centering the plate. You want it to fit in there. If I cocked this or turned it this way, and I go to push the plate down, it's automatically gonna center everything. And so once I have it pushed down and it's centered, I'm gonna lock the base down. Then I can go ahead and tighten my screws down. It's tightened down nice and tight. Then I can go ahead and release it goes up and now I can go ahead and take that centering mandrel out. And when I take this out, what I don't wanna do is I don't wanna like set this like this. I don't wanna give it any ability to knock it out of center. So what you can do is you can just leave it standing straight up and go ahead and loosen this up so you can get your other bit in. Pull the mandrel out. Place my bit in there. 
tighten that down, finger tight, and use my wrench to go ahead and tighten down the rest of the way. And now we're good. And so this is set up and I can flip this up just like this. And that's how I will store it uh, from this point forward. So now that I've shown you how to get the router set up in order to actually start using it, let's talk about what the LR32 system is even for. So like I mentioned before, this is just a quick little demo side panel that I did. As you can see, cabinet side panel example. The size of this is completely based on scraps that I had in my shop. To orient you to this panel, uh, this is the front here, and you'll actually see that it is edge banded. This black line that you see right here would indicate for me the back panel that I'm gonna be utilizing for the cabinet, back panel groove. And then right here, and this is where we're gonna start talking about what the LR32 is even for. This is 672 millimeters from the bottom to the top. Now, why is it 672 millimeters? Well, it's 672 millimeters because it is an exact multiple of 32, right? This is important for one reason. It classifies this as a balanced panel. And so I wanna make that very clear because a balanced panel is what makes the LR32 easy to use. If you aren't using a balanced panel, then you have to make sure that you're always referencing the same end. So if my first set of holes on a non-balanced panel, my stop, which I'm about to show you much closer here in a moment, was referencing the bottom. When I go to turn this, or I flip the LR32 system rail, I need to make sure that I'm still referencing this edge because that's where all of my holes are aligned. As opposed to me having a balanced panel, that means that it is going to fall exactly in the same location, no matter what direction I have the board or what direction I have the rail. And now to give you a better representation of what I'm talking about, if I take this panel and I make sure that it's butted up against this stop here, listen as I push this in. There is no play at all. There's no play. It is exactly a multiple of 32 and it fits inside of here perfectly, which again means that there is no slop uh, from top to bottom. So no matter what it does, I don't have to have a reference edge anymore. It just, no matter what I do, it's gonna work in the same spot. So for everything that I'm gonna show you today is gonna to fall under one setting. So you have the 16 here, there's no markings on this side. And then when you go to the back, there's a nine and a half and there's a 32, right? So these are all different offsets for different scenarios, but to avoid any sort of confusion in this video, we're gonna talk about the one that you're gonna use most frequently, and that would be utilizing the 16. So no matter what video you watch, anybody that talks about this, you're always gonna hear this term called 16 up and away, okay? And so the easiest way for you to remember that is when you place this underneath, 16 should be facing up, meaning I should be able to read 16. This is up. So I can read 16 right now and 16 is closest to me, meaning it's away from the piece that I'm gonna be uh, drilling my shelf pin holes. So 16 up and away and then tighten down the knob. And once you have this tightened down, we're good to go ahead and get started. Again, going back to the, the side panel example, if let's say this is an upper cabinet, more than likely, uh, and we're gonna say it's a frameless cabinet, more than likely you're going to have uh, an area that you wanna put some adjustable shelf pin holes, more than likely they're gonna be right around here in the center, maybe from here to here. And then obviously you're gonna wanna mirror that in the back. Something else that you might have on the front is going to be hinge plates for your uh, frameless hinges. And guess what? Those holes are spaced 32 millimeters apart and are also the same depth in as what we're gonna actually drill shelf pin holes. Now, obviously these are not gonna be an issue when you're talking about back here because this is the back of the cabinet, hence the back panel groove. However, this is important because for me, the way that I do it is I don't want to put my shelf pin holes the same distance from this back edge in as I do the front edge in. I want them to be the same distance from the back panel in and the front edge in. So uh, I do use 37 millimeters. We'll talk about that here in a moment. So it's gonna be 37 millimeters from the front edge of this and 37 millimeters from the front edge of the panel groove. That way it gives a balanced look. 
you know, my, my shelf pin holes are gonna be here, there's gonna be a panel, my shelf pin holes are gonna be here, so it's gonna be the same distance when you're looking at it and it just looks better. But there is something else that you can use the LR32 system for, and it's probably my favorite way to use the LR32 system now, and that is pre-drilling all of the locations for your drawer slides. To where when it's time to install these, you don't need spacers, you don't need anything else, you can simply take your drawer slides, attach them and assemble them that way or attach them after the box is already assembled, but it makes it much easier and pretty universal. Each one of these holes that you see here, 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 those are all five millimeter holes, meaning they will accept these five millimeter Euro style screws for the slides themselves. Like I said, this has become my absolute favorite use for this system, especially now that I'm primarily using the Bloom undermount slides, but it really just makes this process so much easier and so much faster. And I'm not gonna actually show you doing that today. However, I will walk you through the steps uh, because it's essentially the same thing. It's just getting everything lined up for that. So I'm gonna place uh, my set of holes 37 millimeters from the front. Why am I using 37? Well, going back to the drawer slides, just about every set of drawer slides, at least every set of drawer slides I have ever used, has a centerline hole location of 35 millimeters. And I know what you're thinking. Well, yeah, you just said you do it 37, but I just said that it's 35. So the reason I'm gonna use 37 is because not only is it gonna work for my shelf pin holes, but it'll also universally work for my drawer slides because your drawer slides, you're never gonna make them perfectly flush with the front of the cabinet. They always talk about, you know, backing it off about a 16th of an inch. Well, you back it off two millimeters, that gives you 37. So if my shelf pin holes can also double as, uh, or actually triple for the holes as uh, for drawer slides, shelf pin holes, or hinge plate locations. So 37 millimeters. The ones in the back don't matter. Right? I'm still gonna make them 37 millimeters from this back line, um, but they're not, they're not as important because they're not vital to the location for this. So I'll get back more on the slides after we do this first demonstration. So what I have found and I like to do, like I said, I'm gonna show you utilizing the Festool guides uh, for the track. However, when I started doing this system with drawer slides, I found one I'm about to show you much, much easier. So I'm gonna take, grab a different pencil. I'm gonna take this and I'm going to mark a line at 37. Just one line right there. And I'm gonna do another one down here. So now I'm gonna mark the ones in back. And again, this is all gonna make more sense here in a minute. So currently this back panel, again, this is just an example. This wouldn't be necessarily the real thing. So this right now, uh, is 20 millimeters, right? So this is where the panel would be. So 20 plus 37 is gonna be 57. So I just wanna make sure that I find 57 here. And once I found 57, I'm gonna mark a line. I'm gonna mark a line. And these are just gonna be indicator and lineup marks for me when I'm using this rail. Okay, so I'm gonna take my rail and I'm gonna place it on my board and it fits you guys can hear that, the edge stop rubbing against the wood. This is a perfectly balanced panel. So here's what you can do, okay? And what the illustration I'm about to show you is gonna make it very clear why I decided to find another technique to do this. And I'll talk about that here in a minute. So I'm gonna set these to 37 millimeters. So this one is set to 37 millimeters. I'm gonna place it on the guide rail. This one right here. Need to set this to 37 millimeters, just like that. And so the whole idea behind this is now I should just have to go like this, right? 37 millimeters, this is my stop, and then I can clamp this in place. Now let me show you something real fast. Go ahead and take these off. So 37 millimeters, right? So what happens when I'm just gonna flip this around. Normally I could just flip the board, but again, since I have a balanced panel, it doesn't matter what direction I turn it. There's no slop, there's no play, all the holes line up no matter what because it's a balanced panel. I don't need a reference edge. So let's go ahead and do the same thing on this side. 
So I put my, put my rails on. Cool, I'm gonna slide it back. Bam, 37 millimeters. Am I good? No, I'm not, because now it's not 37 millimeters. And so, sure, I could move this to 57, but then I go to my next panel, and why would I wanna go through all that trouble, okay? Um, so yes, you still can do it. I can set it to 57, put these on, and then do it. Or I could do the front edge all at one measurement, and then I could do the back edge. So these work, and they work very well for what they are designed to do. However, Peter Millard from 10 Minute Workshop over in uh, the UK, he created what might be one of the most simple little jigs made of some scrap wood um, that he did a video on that I made as well, and I'm so glad that I did because, let's go ahead and put these back. Put my rail on. All these do is they just go over your uh, guide rail here. And the whole idea behind this is that the end of this is directly in line with the center of your bit. So now what you can do is I can just eyeball it and look at it from above. When I'm on that line, on the line, on the line, it's done. Now I just pop these off, set them to the side, drill all my holes, pick this up, flip it around, pop these on. These were so easy to make, it took like two minutes. Get everything lined up, lined up, it's good to go. Clamp it down, and I drill all my holes. These right here are one of the simplest, nicest things I've ever made uh, for this system, and it makes it so much easier. Now, for those of you that uh, have really you know, bought into this entire system and you have an LR32, or you're thinking about getting it, I would strongly, strongly encourage you to go ahead and pick up one of these clamps as well. Uh, and I'm gonna show you why here in just a minute. So I'm operating mine on my Vaxxis, which is nice, because I could just flip everything around if I wanted to. But this clamp, this clamp really, really makes it incredibly easy to get everything set up, take it on and off, uh, just because it's, you know, that trigger style, and it just, it works really, really, really well. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on there. And I'll, I'll leave links to anything that I'm talking about in this video down below. Yes, they're affiliate links. If you wanna purchase them, great. If not, uh, they're there if you wanna learn more information about the product. So now I'm gonna go ahead and flip this thing over. I wanna lock that clamp down real fast. I don't wanna lock that one down just yet. So going back to get everything lined up. Okay, so on the line. On the line, I'm good. A couple squeezes of the trigger, nice and tight. It's not going anywhere. Okay, so what holes do I wanna drill? Okay, so let's say, you know, we're gonna do a couple of hinge locations. Uh, and again, this is completely for demonstration, I'm, but I'm gonna make it uniform. So I'm gonna count down and we're gonna do the second and third, and then coming down from here, second, third, and I'm marking this for a reason. You'll see why here in a moment. Okay, so we've got 15 holes remaining. Uh, so I know number eight is gonna be the center. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is the center. And let's say that we're gonna do uh, three to the left, three to the right. These are gonna be my center shelf pin holes. So why did I mark them? Well, because as you can see right here, there is actually a little window. And now I know as I go down, which ones I need to use. If there's nothing in the window, I don't do it. I also use these marks as a start and stop. So I'll start on one of these and end on one of these, and then you don't have to mark every single one in between. And they come off fairly easy. You can just wipe them down depending on what you're using to actually do it. Now there is one more thing that we need to do before we get started, and that's set the depth. So I'm gonna go ahead I'll turn this back here again in just a moment. Go ahead and push this down. So I'm making contact with the board. I'm going to go ahead and lift this off now. And I typically just, I just take a 10 millimeter domino uh, because it's really easy. Pop it in there, lock that down, pull it out. And now I know I'm gonna go an additional 10 millimeters in. 
And that typically is planning for the shelf pin holes and or hinge plate uh, holes. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this front side. Uh, for me personally, the thing I like to do um, with the LR32 is, is I actually like moving away from me, you know, meaning I can press down here and continue to push it this way without having to worry about the hose. The hose and the line just goes away. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. I've got it locked on the first setting for the shelf pin, or excuse me, for the hinge plates. Uh, the notional hinge plates, and then I'll do these ones, and then we'll go ahead and flip it all around to the other side, and then I'll briefly talk a little bit more about how you could implement this to do your drawer slides. Okay, so as you can see, I've got my uh, hinge plate lo hole locations. I've got my shelf pin holes. And now, so now I'm just gonna take this off real quick. And since it's a balanced panel, I really can just take it, flip it around, get lined up with my lines. So that one's good. That one's good. Quick check down here. Looks like it's good to go couple squeezes of the trigger. We're set to do just these on the back. Okay, so just to give you a better uh, view, we've got the front of our cabinet here, got a couple of hinge plate locations, we've got the shelf pin holes, everything is perfectly balanced. And here I'll go ahead and bring you in closer just uh, in a moment and I'll put a couple of shelf pins in them and just test the alignment with a straight edge just to show you uh, referencing off at the front side how everything is in perfect alignment with one another. It's a really, really, really easy system to use once you get used to it and you have a grasp on exactly how it is that you can use it. So I placed just a couple of shelf pin holes here um, just to show you and everything is perfectly in alignment, perfectly square to the front edge. Both of them are touching and it just, it makes this process so easy. And the other thing I really wanted to point out, which I forgot to point out is the fact that there is zero dust left over from doing it this way which is absolutely my favorite thing. And so now for those of you that have been wondering how you can actually utilize the system to pre-drill all your holes and make the mounting of your drawer slides a lot easier. So I have recently transitioned to using only the Bloom undermount drawer slides moving forward on any projects that I do. And the great thing about it is you can contact Bloom and they will send you one of their catalogs, which is extremely impressive by the way, but inside of it, it actually has all of the measurements for everything you need to do. Whether you're building face frame cabinets, frameless cabinets, it tells you everything you need to know to pre-do all of your locations. This would also be very useful if you're making your cabinets on a CNC because you could pre-drill all the holes that way as well. But let me just give you an example. So let's do a 12 inch drawer slide and I'll lay out the markings uh, on here as well. And so there's three measurements that I need to know for this. One I already know is gonna be 37 millimeters. And that's gonna be my front screw location, which you can see right here. 37 millimeters, bottom line, I know that's gonna be my first one. The second one, and this is both an imperial and metric. The second one, this section here, A, screw locations for frameless cabinets. I know that I need to put a line at 165, and then B, to the back hole, I know I need one at 261. So 37, 165, 261. So I'm gonna mark each one of my locations and the first one was 37, this one was 165, and this one was 261. And it's the same thing on both sides. And what makes it great is now I can just take my rail, get everything lined up, take these, plop them on there, 
get everything lined up, good to go, tighten it down, and then I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna do my holes. Now, for me personally, and what I did on my son's cabinet, is I just started the holes at one end and ran them all the way up, all the way up, all the way up. And what that did is that just gave me the adjustability to put the slides where I need them to. And especially if you're first starting out and you're trying to figure all that stuff out and you don't wanna try to take the time to figure out the measurements that you need because the drawer box and how high it sits on the slide, then it may not be a bad option just to run the holes all the way to the top and then just go about in placing your drawer slides. This system overall in general, it's just a great system. When you need it, it's absolutely phenomenal and it really does save you a lot of time in the long run. Honestly, that's been one of the most requested videos I've gotten in a long time, especially lately. I will definitely admit that there is a learning curve to figuring the system out. It, it took me a, a while and the help of some really good friends to kind of really dumb it down for me and make it super easy to understand. Hopefully you guys found that video helpful. If you have any questions about it, please leave them down below. Yes, there are more things that are involved to the LR32 system, but again, this was just to highlight a couple of different things to get you started to where you can actually start using it for projects of your own. Or more importantly, for those of you that have the system and have just not taken the time to truly work through it and figure out how everything goes together. As always, everybody, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch the video. I do hope you found it useful and I will have more about the LR32 and maybe some other systems uh, in the future. That's gonna do it for this video, everybody. Until next time, get out in the shop, try something new, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks.